this on your cheat sheet right here. You can cut out some of the words, but you'll need basically that information. So we'll do our second problem, which will also be the last problem for integrating factors. So definitely not linear, maybe homogeneous, but we're not going to solve it like it's homogeneous. So either way, we have to go PY minus QX. So we got P DX plus Q DY is zero. We have to figure out what is PY minus QX, and then figure out which of the three cases we have. Super easy. Way easier than the last one. All right, so that's PY minus QX. Now we have to either divide it by Q, negative P, or YQ minus XP. Those are the three cases. I'm just going to go one, two, three. I recommend when you're doing your homework or your quiz, you write case one, case two, case three. Don't just try to scribble some stuff down. Like actually write case one, PY minus QX over Q. Negative x over one plus x squared. I forgot real quick. When we do the p y minus q x, what are we trying to check that only one variable comes out? Yeah. So <clears throat> you generally won't. I mean, we happen to get uh, just a function of x, but there's three possibilities. Oh, I see. Okay. So if this, what I circled, is a function of y only, we have case one. I don't think we're going to have a function of y only because there's x in there. Yeah. Um, so we'll be trying. I think we're going to fail case one and hopefully pass case two. All right, so this was case one. It was supposed to be a function of y. So it's definitely not a function of y. So case two, p, y minus q, x. I do not have this memorized. I'm just looking back at the note, that line that I wrote down from yesterday. So divide this by negative p which is negative xy. And this should be a function of, oh wait, did I write my cases down wrong? Oh man, anybody bring the textbook today? We got one, let's, let's make sure, I think, I think I have x and y swapped in the cases. Oh, I see what happened. All right. When you just now did it, you did case one and divided. Yeah, by I mislabeled my cases. All right, so these cases are correct. But I think, oh. does your book call the first one number two and the second one number one? I just want to match what your book has. In my handwritten notes, I have a, a two and then a one. <laughs> like that. I have a feeling that's the way the book is labeled. But we've already been working like this, so I'm going to go back to this order, one, two, three. All right, so I totally messed that up. So don't worry about what the book says. We'll just go with these notes. So actual, what I did first was case two right there, according to what I'd written down. So this will be consistent with your notes, right? This is case two. Well, you said that on the notes, you didn't change it. Too. Yeah, I'm not changing the notes. Oh, Because I'm not sure what's in the book. So we're just going to make the notes consistent. So what I did first was case two. And what variable uh, should we be looking for here for the actual case two? Well. So it should be a function. Nope. Yes. X. So we're actually doing case two right now, because I did uh, PY minus QX over Q. So we actually passed case two. Which was the first one we did, right? Which we did case two first. Okay. Yeah, so, so we passed case two, not failed it. 
Yes, we actually pass case two because this should have been a function of x. So I'm going to erase all this. It is possible to have more than one case going on. So just find the first one that works. I will say case three takes a little bit more work because you have a substitution you have to make. So try to go one or two. And if those both fail, then try three. But always try to go one or two first. It's just a little bit easier. All right, so as a function of x, this is uh, f, capital F of x, is this negative x over 1 plus x squared. So our integrating factor is always e to the integral f, in this case, of x dx. So I'm just going to write it like this because that's how the notes were written. So we got e to the antiderivative, and I'll move my negative outside, x over 1 plus x squared. And this, of course, is a dx because this is a x variable. How do I find this antiderivative? It's not tan inverse. Do you sub? U sub. So it's perfect u sub. What u should I use? 1 plus x squared, and basically du is in the numerator. Questions on that integrating factor computation. Now you want to be a little careful. I just tried to check mentally really quickly and I was like, all right, what's the derivative of this, what I just circled? It's not this right here because it's e to that thing. So if you want to check, your what you want to look for is, let's see, this. Oh. I didn't really unsubstitute the right time to really check easily, but it's not quite the antiderivative what you started with because it's e to that antiderivative. So just be a little careful when you're checking. Okay, so we multiply by that and we should have exact. So we're gonna take our ODE, xy dx plus one plus x squared dy equals zero. We're gonna multiply by rho, which is one over square root. 1 plus x squared. What type of differential equation should we have? So I didn't write it in here, but what do we assume? The very first thing we assumed, or supposed, exact. is exact. So we better be looking at an exact equation. So let's jump back to the bottom. That's the, one of the big reasons I go through these proofs is so that it's like meaningful. Of, oh, well, we assumed it was exact and then derived all the uh, consequences. So that, geez, this should be exact. A lot of scrolling. All right. I'm just going to reuse the letter P and Q, even though it's technically row P and row Q. I'm just going to use P and Q right here. So we got P dx plus Q dy equals zero. So if it's exact, you should get PY. So we're going to check exactness. 
equals QX. I have a quick question. How yep. did uh, 1 over square root 1 plus X, or X, like how did it, when it multiplied by 1 plus X squared? It's just like how it That right there on the right side. Where A is the 1 plus X squared. So we got the term divided by its square root is the square root. Just You can just look at power space, like a to the first power times a to the negative half power. You add those two and you get positive half power. Yeah, I'm going to skip more and more algebra steps because there's more and more algebra to do and I want to do calculus steps. So we'll be taking jumps, leaps across algebra. Hopefully we'll get more okay with that. All right, first derivative is super easy right there. That'll just be, everything is constant except y, so it's just derivative y is 1. So that was super easy. Now the x derivative of q, we get 1 half, and then 1 over square root 1 plus x squared. That takes the power down by 1. Multiply by 2x. So that's a little chain rule going on right there. And of course the 2 and a half cancel, so these are indeed equal. What do we do when we have exact? Done. <laughs> Take the integral. Take the integral, <laughs> union them together. It's basically a sum of the unique terms we get. So you do need in your cheat sheet, you need some type of flow chart. So you see, oh, at the end of computing my integrating factor, what I would write if I was making a cheat sheet, I would say C exact because that's what you should have. And then somewhere in your notes, you should have how to solve an exact, how to check exact, how to solve exact. And you may even have an arrow over to exact if, you, if your notes are that confusing. But hopefully you can just say C exact and you know where exact is. So there's a lot of, you know, you finish this thing and then you need to go to the next thing and then you finish that thing, you need to, uh, linears like that. There's all these steps you have to take on linear. So linear, when you're done on the first step of linear, you have whatever homogeneous next, and then homogeneous, you know, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. There's like do this, then that, then the other thing. All right, so we got exact. We just had to integrate, and we integrate with the original variables. Do not integrate py. You integrate p. So I'm going to segment this off. It's not the answer. I'm just segmenting this away. I don't want to be integrating PY. I want to integrate P dx. And integral Q dy. So we'll do both of these. So it's integral xy over square root 1 plus x squared dx. And the other one is integral 1 plus x squared dy. All right, let's do the easy one first. What's the integral? What's the dy integral? That square root dy. Yep, constant, which is 1 plus x squared square root times y. The other one's a little more complicated. I think we did one that's almost exactly the same before. So I think at this point, you've solved enough exact, and it's time to leave. So I'm going to write dot, dot, dot. Make sure that you go home and solve this one or go to the tutor center and solve this one. So this is an exact, you should be able to finish this off. We won't have to unsubstitute because we're in x's and y's. So we got no u going on, so that we don't have to come back to x's and y's. 